Hearing a noise for the second time, the towering football player got up off his sofa, slipped his trainers on and felt the anger stop building inside him. He instinctively knew someone was breaking into his house whilst his three-month-old baby and wife slept upstairs. Why him? He was one of the lads, one of the chaps, he thought to himself as he exited the room, feeling calm transcend over him. He'd been in many dangerous situations growing up, so he felt no fear, just anger at the liberty of the situation and that old familiar calmness he had always felt before erupting into violence. The two robbers came into view, clad all in black. The anger that had been building suddenly erupted as a six foot four ripped football player, Duncan Ferguson, strode purposely towards the shocked intruder. It was game time. Duncan Ferguson, a young Everton FC star, is jailed for three months by the court for headbutting defender John McStay when playing for Rangers against Rafe Rovers in the Scottish Premiership. The lanky striker was seen as a bad boy getting in trouble for headbutting a policeman in 1991 and assaulting a guy in crutches not long after. So the court decided to reject his appeal and send the big target man to jail to the astonishment of his club Everton and the football public in general. He had not been sent off in the match and nobody had really complained at the time and Ferguson later felt it was a stitch up due to the judge being a supporter of a rival team, although that was never confirmed. It was the SFA's lack of support during that period that Ferguson considered a betrayal and most probably led to his retirement from international football. In contrast to the SFA, Everton is their club were unswervingly supportive and were repaid for it. Joe Royal, the manager, visited Ferguson in prison and when he emerged to play his first match, he was piped onto the field. The people who criticised the club for that didn't know what Duncan meant to the fans. He was the right man at the right time for us, said Jim King of the Everton Goodison Supporters Club. He roused the passion at Goodison. He is a supporters player. He knew what we wanted and we knew what he could give us. Despite the short 44-day stay at the notorious Barlingy prison, Big Duncan Ferguson returned to a hero's welcome in Liverpool and became a cult hero over his career spanning over a decade in two spells scoring over 70 goals. He was not a magical type of striker. He was a huge, powerful, aggressive target man, brilliant in the air, who terrorised opposing defenders with his strength and direct running. It's not an understatement to say that although that era bred many tough footballers, like Paul Ince, Yap Stam, Alan Shearer, Roy Keane, Neil Ruddock, Andy Todd, Eric Cantona and many more, Ferguson was seen as the real deal, and rightly so. Bobby Robson once said after a match Ferguson had against Yap Stam for Newcastle United, another team of his, I don't think Stam enjoyed playing against him because he gave him a torrid time. He fought him in the air. He fought him on the touchline. I think Stam probably fought Ferguson found Ferguson the toughest, most awkward striker he's played against this season, including the Champions League. In a podcast with boxer Tony Ballou, a lifelong Everton fan, he stated that he felt he was one of the lads in Liverpool, referring, I believe, to the faces and serious fellas around Liverpool at that time, and didn't believe he would ever be targeted by criminals. He was wrong. They targeted him twice. On the first occasion in 2001, Duncan had been playing Watford in the FA Cup and had come straight home after the match rather than stay in a hotel. He was relaxing on the sofa at 1am in the morning, trying to unwind, when he was disturbed by noises and realised there were intruders breaking in whilst his baby and wife slept upstairs. He openly says he was raging angry at the thought of them picking on him, but felt a deadly calm when he went to tackle the two robbers. He was not shy when he came to violence and he says he really opened up on the first man. As the other ran off, he said, I unloaded. I really did. I really followed him to the point where I thought I'd killed him. I really did. I had to try and resuscitate him then. So you go from a point of unloading on the fella to helping him. It happened in a matter of seconds. The burglars, Michael Pratt and Barry Dawson, were later jailed for 15 months for the break in. We saw them try to steal bottles of champagne, a framed picture and CDs. 
Dawson, who was 22 at the time, spent three days in hospital recovering from the injuries inflicted by Ferguson. Speaking at their sentencing, Judge Anthony Proctor told Dawson and Pratt, there is no way you can be called hardened criminals, but we are dealing with a burglary at night when the house was occupied. The incident shook up Duncan's family and he soon moved to Formby and hoped to forget the memories. But incredibly, fate was to strike twice, just two years later, in 2003. Finally getting his family settled, Ferguson was concentrating on his football career, where he was excelling, and despite some setbacks with injuries, was a firm fan favourite. On the new £2 million property Duncan had, he built an outbuilding where he kept booze and other items of value, and one day walking down to give it a tidy, he sensed a presence. Unbelievably, he sees a man in the middle of breaking in and stealing a range of items. If he was outraged the first time, this time he was epileptic with an uncontrollable anger and ran down to confront the man. The guy wasted no time in trying to smash a bottle over the head of the steaming Glaswegian. It had little effect and was brushed aside as Big Dunk unloaded on the burglar, snapping his jaw and knocking his teeth out, delivering a brutal dish of karma. Carl Bishop, the thief, was hospitalised and eventually sent down for four years. Thankfully, this was the last time Big Duncan was targeted by robbers, and for good reason. Two attempts and two hospitalisation is not great odds. I know people who are friendly with Big Dunk, and there's no doubt he's very much the real deal and can have a right row, as well as being a top-tier football player and now learning his trade in management. In a football career that spanned over 15 years, he'll be fondly remembered by Dundee, Rangers, Newcastle and of course Everton where he's worshipped and he's still a huge cult hero. Although Duncan's undoubtedly a hard man, he also has a softer sentimental side. When Ellie McCoy's first child was born in January 1995, the first present he and his wife received was a giant royal blue teddy bear from Ferguson. Jim McInally recalls Ferguson spending 45 quid on three trays of steak sandwiches for teammates at one Scotland gathering. In 2009, Ferguson placed his support to the Keep Everton in Our City campaign, saying during my time at Everton, Goodison Park came to feel like a second home, with the supporters of the club and the people of the city becoming a second family to me. If you were to take Everton out of the city, I firmly believe the club could no longer call itself the People's Club, and I give my wholehearted support to the campaign to keep Everton in the city. So that's Big Duncan Ferguson. A bit of a revisit. I know everyone will know about that story, but I thought I'd put a bit of pizzazz on it and go into a bit more detail. Um, he'd recently spoken on Tony Ballou's podcast about the incidents. And what is he in his 50s now? Um, you still look at him as he expresses himself on the podcast. And you, he's not a geezer you're going to mess with without getting a good few clubs <laughs> because you can just tell as, as he's speaking he's still got that fire inside him and he was a big unit 6465 I think um, I love watching him play even though I didn't support the teams he was playing for he was great value in watching he'd run the channels he was massive he just sling people out the way he just terror terrorised defenders and uh, opposing team members. He would have been, for my team, Stoke City, especially under Tony Pullis, he would have been the perfect striker for Tony. I bet if you ask Tony, he would have been the main man. Unfortunately, I remember he did suffer a lot of injuries, um, but when he played, well, what a player. And uh, not a massive goal scorer. Uh, I think he scored about one in four, something like that, for the club, but he gave everything and just created lots of chances for other people just through his sort of hard running and strength and you know he clearly doesn't mess about as well when he's got intruders in his house so you know for any would-be burglars out there note to self don't go and rob big Don ferguson's house because you'll end up lying out um so you all enjoyed that. Give me your thoughts. Give you give me your memories of Big Dunk. 
Um, I'll be interested to hear them. I know he's forging a managing career at the moment, just on the first tracks of that and just learning his trade, really. But I wish him all the best. Proper old school geezer. And for my money, was the hardest man in football, um, bar none.